You wanna know what the number one selling dish is in Japan on Christmas Eve? Kentucky Fried Chicken. In 1974, KFC Japan launched a campaign called Kentucky for Christmas. And last year, they sold almost three quarters of a billion dollars in chicken in December alone. Hey friends, my name is George Gianaris. I'm a chef for 36 years, and if you're here, it's because you like to eat healthy, save money, and cook like a pro. A good fried chicken is awesome, and whether or not you're a fan of KFC, the Colonel's left an indelible mark on history, and today we're gonna to try to replicate this iconic recipe, but healthier, with a little help from the Colonel himself. Apparently, this is the original recipe for the famous KFC chicken written on a napkin and published in the Chicago Tribune. I'm gonna replicate this fried chicken based on the ingredients on that list, and I'm gonna give you options, both fried and baked, and as we do in this series, we're gonna make it healthier. And I'm gonna be honest about the flavor. Let's begin. Let's start with the basic organic seasonings that I'm using here for my version of KFC chicken and the full recipe is on my website, awarehousechef.com. We're gonna start off with one and a half teaspoons or seven and a half milliliters of dried thyme, four tablespoons or 60 milliliters of paprika. Hey, special thanks to Aggie for bringing me this paprika directly from Hungary. I mean, look at that color, delicious. One teaspoon or five milliliters of oregano. Apparently back in the day, you could spell oregano this way. One tablespoon or 15 milliliter fresh ground organic black pepper. Three tablespoons or 45 milliliters of white pepper. One teaspoon mustard powder. One tablespoon of ground ginger. A lot of spices in this original recipe are mixed with salt, like garlic salt and celery salt. I did a video on salt, the link to that is at the end of this video, where I talk about how toxic salt can be, so I'm selective about the salt that I use. Plus, the salt I use has a delicious flavor and a natural umami. Uh, more about that in a minute. One tablespoon or 15 milliliters ground celery seed, two tablespoons or 30 milliliters granulated garlic, and one and a half teaspoons or seven and a half milliliters of herb de Provence. The original recipe here calls for basil, but I felt like if I added herb de Provence, it would take it to a whole nother level. If you wanna keep it as close to the original as possible, go with basil. Fine, don't take my word for it. And last but not least, seven teaspoons of Celtic sea salt. So this recipe calls for flour, and I don't do flour. I also don't do corn, which would be an excellent alternative to flour texture-wise for fried chicken. Today I'm gonna experiment with a combination of rice flour and almond flour. I'm gonna mess around a bit with proportions and let you know what combo works best. Also, this recipe is for seven pounds of chicken. Not a big fan of the white meat, so I'm gonna use drumsticks, thighs, and wings. Rinse and pat dry your chicken. Now, KFC is pretty forthright about their use of MSG. I'm not gonna add MSG, but I wanna create that revered umami you get from MSG. I'm lightly brushing on some coconut aminos. It's a good idea to let this marinate overnight, or at least for a couple of hours. All of the spices in the original recipe are combined with two cups of flour. I'm gonna divvy mine up with three flour combinations. One bowl, just organic rice flour, one 50-50 rice and almond flour, and one two to one rice and almond. Someone sent me a stack of these nested stainless steel bowls to review from Amazon. I have a link to them down below. They're pretty cool. They're almost like stainless steel with Tupperware and the lid seals really, really nicely on them. Shake off the aminos and dip it in the flour mix. Keep the chicken submerged in the flour until the oil comes to temp. I'm gonna cook this in avocado oil and I'm heating the avocado oil up to 340 degrees Fahrenheit or 170 degrees Celsius. Cook a couple of pieces at a time, starting with the biggest pieces first. Monitor the temperature of the oil, keeping it around 340 degrees. And as the pieces reach an internal temperature of 175 degrees or 80 degrees Celsius, take them out of the oil and keep them in a warm location at around 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius until all of the smaller pieces are cooked. Now, preheat your oven to 375 degrees and spray avocado oil onto your chicken. Stick a probe like this Thermalworks probe in the thickest piece of chicken and cook the chicken until it reaches a temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 74 degrees Celsius. Assuming you have all the spices in your pantry, 
and you're using organic chicken as well as avocado oil, comparatively, the Kentucky Fried Chicken that you purchase in the store, the eight piece family bucket, is about the same price as if you were to cook it yourself. Now let's take a look at these different chickens. All three of these cooked quite dark. I'm not happy with that. This is the one that came out of the oven and this is beautiful. It's really, really gorgeous. This is very, very moist. Very, very delicious. This tastes like a baked chicken. It does not taste like a fried chicken. I decided to give this a second chance with tapioca flour, which happens to be a lot lighter and fluffier than rice flour. So I went through the whole process again and gave it a try. Avocado oil tends to become darker when you fry with it, and I believe that's part of the reason why the chicken got so dark. But if you keep it at a lower than normal temperature when you're frying it, it's gonna take a little longer to cook, but the chicken will come out perfectly golden brown. It made the color of the fried chicken perfect. It's a perfect golden brown. I cooked it at a lower temperature. I decided to keep it around 320. This looks spectacular. Let's give it a taste. Smells amazing. Smells just like Kentucky Fried Chicken. That is perfect. It's so juicy. Does it taste like Kentucky Fried Chicken? No. It tastes significantly better. I'm sure you could taste the similarities because I basically use the same herbs that they use, but mine have an individual pop where Kentucky Fried Chicken is almost like this giant bashing of a heavy salt concentration. Give it a try, leave a comment down below. Thank you for helping me to grow this channel by hitting that like button. I want to wish you a happy holiday, a Merry Christmas, and a healthy and prosperous New Year.